Jodie, now the return of Gladiators has become must-watch Saturday night telly. And Jodie Ounsley, known to millions as Fury, is the show's first deaf gladiator. Now, when Jodie was only 14 months old, she became the youngest person in the country to have a cochlear implant fitted. And tomorrow night, we'll see her back in action. Next up, taking on the edge, it's Bronte. And she will be facing Fury. Bronte bursts into her stride straight away. And the edge proving no match for her. Three points turns to six. Well, you can tell this firefighter is well used to heights. She's not bothered by them one bit and gets through to make it nine. Fury's going to have to do something about this. Please welcome the awesome Fury. You mean business. <laughs> can I call you Jody now? I'm less scared yeah, then. Yeah, no, you can, yeah. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Thank and you for you. being here. Uh, Jody. you have achieved so much, but what does it mean to be a gladiator? Oh, it, it honestly means the world. Like, it's such an honour. Um, you know, being a big fan of gladiators and growing up, but then, you know, being deaf and growing up, not seeing many deaf role models mm -hmm. and now to have that opportunity it's it means the world yeah but you were destined to be in the gladiators arena because yeah. your dad was a contender back in the day and you yeah. remember this you were you were very young at the time but your house was almost turned into like a, a practice zone for him to be on the show yeah literally like like i said i was like seven years old and i remember being at the live shows i remember watching him compete even training so like i said he set it all up in the garage like hand tough rings climbing wall you know saturday night wrestling with each other so <laughs> yeah i feel like i was just made to do this it was meant to be yeah. but you were particularly proud to be a gladiator because you are making history as the first deaf gladiator and you see this as a hugely important platform i think because yeah. you're wanting to be a role model you want to make a difference yeah i mean like even since i've been young i've just always wanted to be a good person, be a good athlete. Um, and now with sort of the pos like position I'm in, I'm very honored to have that opportunity. And I just want to be a good role model and show sure, little kids, you know, like you can be powerful, you can be strong, you can be a badass, but you can also be deaf whilst doing it as well. Absolutely. So. And lots of people getting in touch with you for that very reason, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know? I mean, the responses I've had, it's been honestly heartwarming. Um, little kids, like I saw the other day a video of a little eight year old girl showing her muscles, like a little bicep saying she's strong like Fury um, and she had cochlear implants as well. And I just love seeing that because I, I just want to, I'm so passionate about it, and I just want to show that it is possible, um, so yeah. Well, you've proven anything is possible, Jodie, because doctors had initially said that certainly any contact sport yeah. would be incredibly risky. You, of course, didn't listen <laughs> and played rugby. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, that in itself, you were the first female rugby player to represent England Sevens, in fact, a huge accolade. I also have to ask you about the world cold carrying championships. Yeah. I think this title interests me probably more than anything. What is it exactly? Well, it kind of does exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's basically a Yorkshire event um, up in Yorkshire every Easter Monday. Um, and you basically run with a sack of coal on your shoulders. It's from the pub and the first one took Maypole. <laughs> um, so yeah, I um, my dad did it when he was um, he sort of did the races and I was very young. I was like three years old and I, I, I remember watching him training in the, like, in the garden, but I didn't understand what was going on. Um, so, yeah, we had, we had a horse at the time and my dad said I picked up a sack of carrots, <laughs> put them on my shoulders and like sprinting around the kitchen like a little sort of crazy kid. <laughs> um, so then from then he, I competed in the race um, and did it every year and won it five times. And I can't compete now with rugby and things like that, but we still go watch every year as a family, so it's, it's a big part of our lives, really. And we've talked about your family. We have to give your mum a mention as well, because your <laughs> mum and dad, of course, when, when they were first told that you were profoundly deaf as a little baby, they sort of sat back, absorbed the information, and thought, OK, we're just going to do things differently. In fact, we're going to do more. Yeah. And that's been your approach from day one, really. And I know your family have been a huge support 
for you because they've just yeah. wanted you to go and get everything and to prove those doctors wrong in the best yeah. possible way. Yeah, I mean, my parents are my absolute rock. Mm. Um, my mum is an absolute wild, <laughs> wild character, but she's very, works very hard, just believe in yourself, um, be a good person, mm -hmm. be kind, and all these things. I really sort of look up to my parents and just want to want to do them proud, really. Um, but, yeah, they've always pushed me, always supported me, and just as long as I work hard and be a good person, then things come from that, so... Yeah, and you have it in your gut as well, that's the thing, yeah, you know, Jodie. You know, you, you, yeah. from the very beginning, you had a real passion and desire to just go against what people expected of you. Yeah, I feel like I've just always had a bit of fire in me just to prove people wrong mm -hmm. um, and just sort of show you that whatever I've done, whether it's growing up in sports, I've just always got stuck in, I've just always wanted to succeed and I'm very competitive, mm -hmm. so especially as Fury, I'm, once I'm in the zone, I am in the zone. But then afterwards, I'll give you a big hug. Yeah. I do not know why anyone wants to be a contender against <laughs> any of you. Honestly, it's so brilliant to watch, but you all come out and you're all so incredibly fit and strong. And, and the contenders are fantastic, yeah, but yeah. equally so. There's nerves, there's lights, there's an audience. It's a stressful yeah. environment, albeit an entertainment show. Yeah, I mean, it's like people just might think, oh, it's just it's just a show, but it's not. When you're out there and you're in the arena... Do you want to win? Yeah, I, 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 I see it as, like, the World Cup rugby final. I see it as, like, I'm so competitive. And obviously the contenders as well, they come at us hard. So, um, yeah, it's, it's such a great atmosphere and the kids, you know, families, it's just, it's been incredible. So, um, hopefully... There's more very exciting things to come, so... Yeah, yeah, there really is. And you want to do everything that comes your way. I know podcasting is happening for you and goodness knows what else because it's sort of like doors are opening all the time, as they should do. Best of luck. We love Fury in our house. Oh, thank you. oh my goodness, my little girl just thinks you're the best thing ever. Oh, so you've brilliant. got a fan of us as well. Um, of course, Gladiators continues 5.50 tomorrow on BBC One. It's brilliant. We're loving it. Thanks so much. Thank Julie. you. Good luck Thank with you. everything and the rugby, of course. <laughs> uh, still to come.